So the good news is I think we're ready to go with story time. Um, Arthur, are you there? Yep, good to go. Let's read some books. Excellent. Indeed. Thanks, everybody. This is a very exciting moment. I hope uh, some of you have managed to gather children around. Uh, on my screen, I can see Julie Smith-Belton and uh, and family there, which is wonderful. And I'm sure there are lots of others that aren't showing on my screen because uh, we have people all around the world. I think that at last count, we had nine different countries represented in today's teams, which is just extraordinary and, uh, and super, super exciting. Um, for those who are joining us who haven't been part of today, really special welcome and thank you for joining us. It is a really special thing for us to begin the journey of sharing these books beyond the people who are here on the call today making these, these books. Uh, you are going to be the first to see them. What we're going to do this evening is uh, we have 10 books to read, each created by a team of uh, a writer, illustrator, designer, helped with by an editor, carefully facilitated by a team of facilitators, and, um, and they've created an just amazing book, each team, and they're going to read them to us. The writers are going to read the story. I will introduce each team or ask each team to, uh, to read their book, and I will be asking the writer to do that. And the writer will also just say, when, they, when I show the cover of the book, who the illustrator and designer were as well. Um, and that way we can get through these books because we have 180 pages of the glorious children's literature to share with you. So we better get on with it. Uh, lots to get through. Great. We'll start with team one. Hani, do you want to read here for us? And I'm just going to uh, put the uh, the book up on the screen while you get unmuted and um, and start the story. Thank you. A huge shout out to Chantal and Bergen Thorne, our two four illustrators, and then of course Ezra as our designer, and then again amazing editing with um, Alison. The best gift. Gibran loves building with toy bricks. Dad says, that's very good, Gibran. You've got a gift for building things. What if I have another gift? Gibran wonders. Do I have just one gift, Dad? He asks. You'll only know if you try many things, says Dad. I want to try cricket, says Gibran. He joins the cricket at school and learns to bat and bowl. He hits the ball hard. Pew! Wow, says Coach Uno. What a great batsman you are. You've got a gift, Gibran. At karate class, Gibran practices his katas with Sensei Shokut. His friend Sumeya does them very well. Excellent, Sumeya, says Sensei Shokut. Gibran tries again. He makes another mistake. He smiles at Sumeya and high fives her. You're really good, Sumeya. You have a gift. You didn't give up, Gibran. That's a gift too, says Sumeya. How was karate? asked Dad. I made many mistakes and didn't give up, Dad. Karate is Sumeya's gift. You'll discover other gifts, says Dad. Gibran wonders what they are. I love music. Am I good at music? Dad, can I play the drums? He asks. Well, let's try, says Dad. They turn some pots and buckets upside down and get two wooden spoons for drumsticks. Gibran imagines a whole band playing with him. He beats the drum to a simple rhythm. Dum da dum da dum pow. Little Lath rocks back and forth on the chair as Gibran plays the drum. That sounds amazing, says Dad. I love that beat. You've got a gift, Gibran. 
Gibran laughs. He loves discovering a new talent when he tries something new. This is fun, Dad. I love my gifts. Yay! Just then, little Lath rocks the chair over and falls to the floor. Gibran jumps to help his baby brother. Are you okay, little Lath? He asks. He rubs little Lath's head. He kisses little Lath's tears. Can I kiss it better, little Lath? He asks. Can I hug it better, little Lath? Dad smiles. Aha, uh -huh, says Dad. Look how kind and loving you are. That's the best gift. That's the one to practice every day. Gibran laughs. Little Late laughs too. What's your gift, Little Late? He asks. Yay! Thank you so much. It's always a pity that everyone's on mute just when we should all be applauding. So, um, what you can do at least to, to applaud visually is to wave, but also if you are in Microsoft Teams and you look at the top right, you might see a little reactions button that lets you do things like uh, do a little applause, which is always nice. Great, thank you so much, honey. That was just so wonderful. I, uh, I know from my own son's uh, son and his friends that discovering what your gifts are is a big part of uh, discovering yourself as a child. It's really fun. Okay, let's move on to team two. And there's a fire on the mountain. Uh, Kirsty, do you want to uh, unmute yourself and come read us a story? Hi, everyone. I'm Kirsty. I was the writer of this book, and the illustrator was the amazing Julie Smith Belton, who is was an absolute genius. Um, our designer was Nadine Rainier. Thanks. And thanks also to our editor, Margot. There's a fire on the mountain. My friends and I have a game we like to play. There's a fire on the mountain. Run, run. Kukum lilo kwezuntaba. Balega, balega. Then one day there was a real fire on the mountain. It was a terrible fire that burned and burned. Big old bird buildings burned, books burned, trees and grasses burned. Helicopters tipped water onto the fire and brave firefighters blasted their hoses. And people did run. They grabbed their books and bags and ran away from the smoke and flames. After three long days, the last flames were out. The firefighters could finally rest. The slopes of the mountain were black. When we walked on the mountain, all we could see were rocks and burnt bushes. We were very sad. Until one day, tiny bits of red popped up through the black. Look, look, what is that? The little bits of red grew and grew until they became beautiful fire lilies, tall and elegant with drooping red bells for flowers. Then came the big red flowers bursting through the green like volcanoes. They looked like thick red tubes with yellow topped spikes and big red petals. Dots of green grew all over the mountainside, turning the black into green grasses and restios. Then there were the as asparagus ferns unfolding in wet patches after the rain and the tall Watsonia in orange and pink. Soon the mountainside was covered with plants we hadn't seen for years. The mountain is full of new life. Oh, thank you, Kirsty. Just so beautiful. Click, click. Um, so that they can hear. Click, click, click. You can see all the yeah. Click. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Such a beautiful. Yay! Uh, we can probably. Do that. Well, yeah. many of us who have uh, been in Cape Town, lived in Cape Town, or have loved ones in Cape Town over the last uh, month, uh, will. So that's a special story and to have it told so beautifully uh, both lyrically and in its, its imagery and design is just really special so thanks that's not just a gift uh to to children but uh but 
holds a special place for us Cape Tonians. Thanks. Okay, let's move on to uh, team three, where we will read all about the boy who only ate pancakes. Kristen, over to you. Hi, I'm Kristen Dembaremba. I'm the writer of this book, and it was illustrated by Ulrika Marie. She did an excellent job, and it was designed by Nadine Krill and edited by Mandy Collins. The boy who only ate pancakes. Rekai loved to eat pancakes more, more than anything in the whole world. He loved pancakes so very much, he simply refused to eat any other food. Rikai's mom said, eat some good food, have some veggies and fruit, and don't forget water and juice. But Rikai shook his head and said, no, I don't want to, only pancakes will do. Then his mom had an idea. I know how to get Rikai to eat healthy food, she said. She mixed up a batch of some extra special pancakes with a surprise ingredient. Mom watched as he gobbled them up and she was very pleased. Softly she giggled and thought, this is great. He has no clue what he has just eaten. Then one day, Rekai caught mom adding butternut to the pancakes and he was very surprised. Your secret ingredient is a vegetable, he cried. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, he enjoys eating his pancakes and every day mom adds many yummy surprises. Sometimes she adds spinach, sometimes she adds carrots, sometimes she adds strawberries or even apples. It's a fun surprise every single time. And then there's the pancake recipe in the back. I'm not sure if I should read through the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> we will make sure we get copies. Thank you. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you for the family joining you. Hi guys, thank you very much. I believe there's some truth to the story. And so presumably yes, the family the knows the story. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <It's the guy. laughs> Thank you for bringing us all this pancake recipe. We will all be enjoying it soon, I'm sure. Fantastic. Thank you. OK, we are on to the next team, and I'm going to hand over to Sam. Sam Bessinger, all the way from Cambridge in the UK. Over to you. Hi. Yeah, so um, I'm Sam, and I worked with the most delightful and monstrous team which was Anya Fenter, Vilna Kombrink, and our editor was Carla Lever. And our story is How to Tame a Monster. Rwando has a little sister named Oyiso. Sometimes she is very cute, but sometimes she turns into a monster. That's okay, because Luando is a monster tamer. On Monday, the monster looked angry, but Luando knew she was just hungry. On Tuesday, the monster looked very angry. But Luando knew she was just tired. On Wednesday, the monster looked even angrier. But Luando knew she was just sad. On Thursday, the monster looked furious, but Luando knew she just needed some quiet. But 
on Friday, nothing worked. Then there were two monsters. The monsters got bigger. And bigger. Luckily, Dad is the best monster tamer of all. He knows you can't tame monsters by being bigger or angrier. You can only tame monsters by helping them feel safe. Hey. I love it so much. It's so wonderful. Thank you so much. Just wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you. I wish I'd had that book when I was uh, very young and the eldest child and didn't understand siblings. Um, took me a long time to figure that stuff out. So here we are. They've got a head start. Wonderful. Thank you. OK, we are on to the next team and Klotlejo's tea party. Uh, Laura, over to you to read it to us. Klotlejo's tea party. Illustrated by Nicolene Lowe, written by Laura De Lange, designed by Ashlyn Atkinson and edited by Nabila Lata. Tlotlejo is hosting a tea party for the whole family. How many people are coming for tea, Coco? You, me, Mama and Papa, and your little sister, Siamo. Tlotlejo counts the teacups as he takes them from the kitchen. One, two, three, four, and one for Coco. Tlotlejo goes to the stoop and places the teacups down on the table. One, two, three, four, and... I only see four cups, says Coco, but we are five people. When I was in the kitchen before, there were five cups. Tlotlejo exclaims. Tlotlejo counts the pretty little plates as he takes them from the cupboard. One, two, three, four, and five. There is a plate for each of us. Tlotlejo goes to the stoop and places the plates next to the teacups. One, two, three, four, and whoops. I only see four plates, says Coco but we are five people. Tlotlejo counts the biscuits as he takes them from the jar. One, two, three, four, and five. Tlotlejo goes to the stoop and places the biscuits on the plates. One, two, three, four, and oh, what's happening? I only see four biscuits, says Coco, but we are five people. Tlotlejo is very confused. He knows he has been counting correctly. Before, he had five biscuits, and now there are only four. How did the biscuits become less? Totlejo counts the sugar cubes as he takes them from the jar. One, two, three, four, and five. Tlotlejo goes to the stoop and places the sugar cubes on the table. This time, he is sure he hears a giggle. One, two, three, four, and five, shouts a voice from under the table. Tlotlejo bends down to look under the table. To his shock, he sees a complete tea set laid out under the table. There are the missing teacup, plate, and biscuit. His little sister holds up the fifth sugar cube. Five! When Mama and Papa come home from work, they all have tea on the stoop. One, two, 
three of them having tea at the table and two of them having tea below. Yay, thank you. Thank you, Jared. Thanks, everyone. That was wonderful, Laura. Thank you. For those who uh, weren't here in the early discussions uh, at earlier in the day, I um, mean, one of the interesting things about this book is that uh, Laura works a lot with uh, maths literacy, um, and this is really helps to cement some key concepts around uh, counting more and less uh, and understanding those mathematical concepts and principles, which is really going to be wonderful to see this book in the world um, doing its work with children. So that's extra uh, value on top of it just being fun, which is really the most important thing for the books we like to make at Book Dash. OK, how are we doing? Let's go to whose show is this? Uh, Sipili, are you going to read this for us? Over to you. Hi, um, whose show is this? Um, it was Magic to Life by our illustrator, illustrator Alicia Fanzel um, and our designer Kuti Ngaimbana. I am the writer, Spilsebe Makanya, and um, the writing was made better by Nabila Lata, our editor. Fezile, we need to go. Come and help Gogo find her black shoes. And there's Fezile under the bed with his tongue sticking out. Whose shoe is this? Fezile imagines the red hill as a tunnel for a train in the city. Fezile, yes, Gogo, where are you? I'm looking for the shoes. Whose shoe is this? Fezile imagines the men's shoe as a taxi driving through the city. Where are you, my child? I'm still looking. Whose shoe is this? Fezile imagines the flip-flop as an island by the sea. Have you found the shoes? Let's look for them together. Please fetch the broom. And that is Fezile and Granny going to the shops. And if you've been paying attention, you might have noticed that there's a little chicken hiding on almost every page. I love it. Thank you so much. The, um, the vivid imagination there is just such fun. Uh, one of the things that I learned in an early conversation years ago when originally um, setting up Book Dash um, with the team here um, was just how important psychologically it is for children and the people reading the book to them to bond over an image and to talk through the image. And that shared attention they share is extremely important to the child's own uh, psychological development and the emotional development. And this is a book that just screams at me that there are going to be conversations about imagining what what can the shoes be um, and what else can they be. So that's it's just such a wonderful vehicle to unlock those moments between readers and um, children and, and the people reading to them. So thank you. Very special. Cool. On to little shoots. Uh, Chope, over to mm -hmm. you. All right, great. Thank you so much. OK, so this is Little Shoots brought to life by the amazing Team 7, comprising of uh, Wayne de Yaga, who is the illustrator that brought all of these characters to life, including our cats, mouse, and birds. Um, it was also um, designed by Tokozani and Kize and edited by the amazing Alison Ziki and written by myself, Shukma Martins. All right, so here goes. Little shoots. When will I grow? Asks Lyo. I don't know, says Baba. Soon, says Mama. When you are ready, says Grandma. Grandma takes Lyo to the farm. Let us plant some seeds. In one field, they plant corn, and in another, 
Melon, what are these? asks Laya. Bamboo seeds, replies Grandma. And this is Laya seeing another year and he's still not growing any taller. The corn and melon have grown well, says Grandma. What about the bamboo? asks Laya. They will grow when they are ready. And here we have him, another year passing, still not catching up with his friends. Everything grows in its own time, says Grandma. They have grown well, says Grandma. And we have the bamboo seeds shoots finally going up and Lyra catching up with his friends. You have grown well. And that is the end. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. So beautiful. And I think that one of the things, this is a book that um, is going to be better on the second, third, and fourth readings. Like every time the child comes back to it and they find more the clues that he's growing, that Lyra is growing. Um, and understanding that that process and something that I learned during the process of watching this book come to life is that bamboo doesn't grow fast at first it takes a long time before it actually then gets its earns its reputation as a fast grower so my mind has been blown around this one so thanks so much that's great okay Ali are you going to read Puck or the pigeon disappears to us over to you yes hello Paco the Pigeon Disappears, illustrated by Christensen, written by myself, Ali Tukupasia, designed by Joe Muminya. I hope I said that right, <laughs> edited by Mandy Collins. Okay. This is Paco the Pigeon. Paco goes, cool, cool. She flies over and spreads out her wings, like in that picture. She loves to fly over Namwai and Dairin's house as if they crisscross every day. Coo, coo, Paco, Paco. Namwai and Dairin love to imitate Paco. They spread their little hands and run around the house, and there is Kat also trying to fly. One day, Paco did not fly over the house as usual. Where could she be? Dairin, Namwai, and the cat looked for Paco in the garden, but she was not there. They looked in the sky and they could not see Paco anywhere. This made them very sad. Cat called to Paco, meow, meow, very loud. Cat heard Paco reply and followed the sound, coo, coo. Over the fence there goes Cat jumping. Oh no, Paco was caught in a thicket. Not to worry, Cat replied, I have soft and tender paws, see? Cat carried Paco gently to Namwai and Dairin. They could see that Paco, Paco had, a hurt, had hurt her wing. Paco's wing was very sore, but the girls took good care of her. With mom's help, Namwai and Dairin bandaged Paco's wing to help her heal quickly. The girls shout, would shout, good morning, Paco. When Paco healed, she flew home, but she would fly to the girl's window each morning. And meow, meow, the cat would also respond to Paco's cuckoo. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. 
so beautiful. One of my favorite things about this story is that the first time I read it, I kept waiting for the cat to, let's just say, not treat the pigeon very well. But the story is just so wonderfully happily surprising that the cat is actually the gentle savior. Um, I just love that it just turns our expectations on their heads. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you. OK, on to the next team. And Polile, do you want to uh, go for it and uh, read us the story? Over to you. Hello, uh, I'm going to be reading Yes, You Can that was brought to life by Subi Bosa, who did a fantastic job, and um, Georgia Dimitris. Um, our editor was Margot. What do you want to be when you grow up? Asks teacher Langa. Pooja shouts, I want to be a cook. I love helping my mom bake and cook at home. Nandi says, no, that's a girl's job. My mom does all the cooking at home. Yes, he can, Nandi. You can be anything you want to be, says teacher Langa. The class chants, yes, you can. <laughs> Milani says, I want to build houses like my dad. No, you can't. That's dangerous, yells Patu. Yes, she can, Patu, as long as she loves it, replies Teacher Langa. The class chants, Yes, you can. Stella says, I want to be a nurse. The class bursts out laughing. What is so funny? asks Teacher Langa. Nandi replies, Nurses are girls. They are male nurses too, says Teacher Langa. So, class, can Pachu be a nurse? The class booms. Yes, you can. <laughs> I want to be an artist and draw pretty pictures, says Liana. That's not a real job, says Tula, and rolls his eyes. That sounds lovely, Liana, replies teacher Langa. Can Liana be an artist? Yes, she yes, can. She can. <laughs> Shouts the class. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an alarm clock, says Patu. <laughs> huh? What do you think, class? Asks teacher Langa. The class booms. Yes, yes, you yes, can. Yes, yes, you can. can. <laughs> Nandi hasn't shared what she wants to be when she grows up. What do you think she could be? The end. Anything she wants to be is wonderful. Thank you. A special applause to the chorus. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. So wonderful to have you here with us. You and all the other children here are our most special guests by far. So thank you. Marvelous, marvelous. OK, we are unfortunately onto our last book. I can't believe it. Um, so for the last one, um, over to Zelaika. Do you want to take it away? Uh, Good evening, everyone. This is Shaka and Mazi, written by Zulaika Goro, designed by Natalie Pierre Eugene, and illustrated by the talented Heather Jenkins, edited by Dr. Carla Lever. All right. Shaka has a new friend that only he can see. His name is Mazi, he tells Mama. But whenever Mama comes to Shaka's room, Mazi runs and hides. Mazi likes to laugh. He makes Shaka laugh too. They roll in the grass and build castles in the sand.
can Mazi eat with us? Shaka asked Papa at dinner. But when Papa looks up, Mazi hides behind the curtains. One day, Mama tells Shaka, Papa has a new job. We are moving to another town. Can Mazi come? Shaka asks Mama. Ask him, Mama says. But Shaka can't see Mazi anywhere. The next afternoon, the big truck comes. Soon, the house is empty. But Shaka can't leave. Where has Mazi gone? Is Mazi in the garden? As he jumped over the fence? Maybe Mazi's papa got a new job too, Mama says. He might also have moved away. When Shaka gets to the new house, there is a boy next door. My name is Mati, says the boy with a smile. Sometimes we miss old friends, Mama says, but there is always room in our hearts for new ones. Thank you. Yay. Thank you so much. So, so lovely. Yo, and as you can see, we are packing up our house right now. I haven't yet discussed Aidan's imaginary friends, so he and I will have to have a conversation because I know we're all a bit anxious about leaving our home and what we leave behind and what we will discover when we get to the new place. Everybody, thank you so much. These have been such, such special stories. You are such, such special people who have done just extraordinary, extraordinary work to bring these beautiful books to life in the last 12 hours. I think uh, for those of you who are joining us uh, just this evening, who weren't here all day, I think you, you might have a sense of just how much ground has been covered. And I promise that it is 10 times as much as you can imagine. Uh, it has just been a monumental achievement. Uh, we often call Book Dash the, the comrades of bookmaking, not only because it's extremely hard, but because you bond with other people on an extraordinary journey over an extraordinary long time for a whole day. Um, but we all come out at the other end of Big Family. The Book Dash community of creatives who have produced books, numbers in its hundreds all over the world now. Uh, the books travel all over the world too. Um, last, late last year, we hit a big milestone of distributing a million free copies to children. And in the last, just in the last six months, we've managed with the amazing support of a whole array of partners, funding partners and distribution partners, managed to give another half a million books to children. And that number, it will just keep growing. Um, and it is wonderful to have more and more books to add to those numbers as they travel the country and the world beyond, both in print and digitally as well. For these books, after today, we'll go through a couple of extra uh, checks and steps just to uh, get them uh, absolutely ready to be distributed. They will then also go onto our website where anybody in the world can read them and can download them and can translate them or adapt them, uh, can print them for themselves because these books are gifts that we have all made for the world because what the world needs is an abundance of books. The numbers that we think of when we think of books must be very high. Um, Book Dash's vision, if you don't know it already, is that every child should own 100 books by the age of five. And that is starting. It's very early days, but it's starting to become a reality um, in large uh, part because of the efforts of people like you. So thank you, everybody, for that.